Amazingly, these doll rams walk by rank, each knowing its place in the group. Wild animals are driven by instinct for family order, self-preservation, protection of their offspring, and for food. The behavior of wild animals is so impressive that over the centuries, we have honored some of these untamed beasts with mythical qualities. The result is a mixture of truth and fable. I'm Marty Stauffer. Join me for these amazing legends. One of the most enduring of legendary animals is the mountain lion. This elusive cat is a fearless fighter, even against the mighty grizzly bear. First, however, mother cougar must hide her young from the approaching menace. Watching this cougar family, it's hard to believe how often folk tales refer to them as sinister. The reality is that an unwelcome trespasser is headed for a harsh lesson in cougar defense. As a Seneca Indian tribal legend goes, just wearing the skin of a mountain lion will make a man fearless. And of course, the cougar always wears her coat It's time for the showdown.
even though the grizzly outweighs the cougar by four times. In this encounter, the bear retreats. Its mythic prowess has, for the moment, been superseded by an even greater power, a mother's instinct to protect her babies. But animals do not become the frequent subject of folklore by slinking off into the underbrush. There are other reasons they become legends. No one knows exactly how allegory begins. But when the earth is dark and cold, legend may be born at a campfire listening to ghostly voices in the night. For centuries, wolves have been symbols of wickedness, prowling the dark to catch victims unaware. Little Red Riding Hood and the Three Little Pigs are all mythic victims of wolves. With fables of werewolves that prowl the night, they are evil incarnate. Maybe we are intrigued because they have what we consider human traits. Intelligence, loyalty, and family values. And they kill to survive. This is not an attack for food. Once wolves reach maturity, they rarely experiment with new prey. The direction of the wind in the trees impaired the wolves' acute hearing. They were startled and lashed out. There has never been a documented death of a human by a wild wolf in North America. These intelligent canids prefer to avoid the menace of man. In a wilderness without man, wolves need not fear predators. Nothing in the wild preys on an adult wolf. Arctic tundra wolves use these branching braided trails to track their primary prey. Caribou herds leave these patterns in the snow as they make their thousand-mile journey north each year. A native fable has it that caribou used to be one with humans. They lived a balanced, orderly existence. The tundra wolf knows nothing of myth and legend. Their wisdom is derived from animal intelligence and keen senses. The pack follows the herd, scenting, testing, sizing up the weak or unhealthy in the group. Wolves are very selective in choosing their prey. When they sense that the time is right, the wolves put their renowned cunning, endurance, and speed to the test. Working as a team, the wolf pack cuts out a few of the herd to isolate a weak member. Hungry wolves usually prey on such large animals 
they often can't eat more than half their kill. This leaves something for the carrion consumers in the food chain, like the bear and the raven. The raven is much more than a scavenger. It's the subject of countless myths and fables. Prominent in stories of creation, the raven is revered in Native American folklore as a driving force of nature. Ascension tribal story goes, when the world was covered in ice and snow, the raven looked at the monochromatic world and decided to turn it green. bird admired its work, but began to miss the time when the world was white. In a yearning for the old days, the raven touched every tenth black bear and turned it white as a permanent reminder of when the world was pure. Today, on an island off our northwest coast, one in ten black bears are white. These are not albinos, but Kermode bears, ghost bears. When fish are abundant in the stream, the bears are drawn like moths to a flame. This young ghost bear sees what it wants. Getting it is another problem. challenge. Keeping what it has caught can be an even more frustrating task. The hungry onlooker decides to move in on our white friend's catch. He chomps a warning to the intruder without success. With the lazy interloper's dominance established, the pie has suddenly gotten smaller. There seems only one avenue open to our young bear. Find another pie. The Indian legend of the spirit bear ends with the raven's decree that no human should settle in its territory. In that way, the raven would always have a reminder of the world as it once was. autumn in the Rocky Mountains. The high elevations groan with heavy accumulations of new snow, covering a slippery crust beneath. Avalanche conditions. A 
another sound echoes in the rarefied atmosphere. Bighorn sheep rams fight to determine breeding status. Males with similar sized horns vie for the right to mate. Their high velocity collisions can be heard for miles. Older males with the largest horns are not challenged to these duels. Their mating rights have already been determined. For these sure-footed alpine legends, high altitude life is lived on the edge. The steep, often loose terrain is home turf for daily encounters. A younger ram tries to consort with an older ram's ewe. The older one makes his wishes clearly known. A gentle nudge is all it takes. But hormonally charged rams continue the frenzied pursuit of ewes in estrus, even attempting to mount the females on these treacherous slopes. Early in spring, with snow still covering the high country, Dad, brothers Mark and Marshall and I, come across a pair of wolverine cubs. It's difficult to believe that these cute little bundles of energy will become one of the most ferocious animals in the wild. Hey, you guys, come on down, look at this. Dad comes across evidence of nature's power. Holy Moses. Huh. This, well, this thing was killed in an avalanche. Frozen solid. Yep. Even though this ram did not survive, his offspring will carry on. As the spring melt continues, Rams, which were lucky enough to endure the harsh mountain winter, live separate from the ewes during the season of newborns. It's up to mother to introduce the lamb to its rocky home. Exactly how she teaches the tender lamb to fear the likes of the golden eagle above and to traverse the crags below is a yearly drama played out at dizzying altitudes. But for now, this little guy is in the process of getting himself lost. The legendary golden eagle waits for an opportunity to knock the lamb off the edge.
The lucky little lamb finds its way to safety. The ewe obliges with comfort only a mother can give. The chill in the air is a reminder that winter will soon come again. When it arrives, the cycle of life will continue, recorded in memory and mythology. Native American images are a visual reference library of these legendary creatures. Some of them relate tales of wild horses, mustangs, The Indians domesticated some, but millions roamed free. The time of the Indian horse culture was short. Westward expansion by Europeans thinned their numbers. What was left of the vast herds of Mustangs were only echoes in the isolated canyons and rugged mountains of southern Montana. Today, in what are thought to be descendants of those herds, many hundreds still roam our west. Now they group in small bands, headed by a dominant stallion like this older sorrel. These renowned survivors gather at water holes where social dramas often play out. The dominant sorrel must prove himself again when an upstart bachelor gets too close to the mares. The skirmish sets off a chain reaction of sparring among the other bachelors. These outbursts are not vicious. The rough practice earns them the skills to win and keep mares of their own someday. Of all the legendary characters in folklore, none is as persistent as the Mustang. This magnificent raven black stallion has temporarily left his young son, a gray, in charge of his small band. The stallion is about to fall victim to a bachelor's devious plan. While a fellow conspirator keeps the inexperienced young gray distracted, this would-be rustler makes his move on the band. Together, the two stallions engineer the theft of the black stallion's mares. The heroic battle between good and evil, between dominator and dominated, is the stuff of mythology. Once the reluctant band is moving, the upstart stallion can complete his mission by running off the co-conspirator so he can claim the entire group for himself. When the Raven Stallion returns to find his band gone, a frantic search begins. The Stallion's son, the distracted Gray, tries in vain to slow the getaway. Raven Stallion catches a glimpse of his band disappearing over a ridge and pursues with the nervous fervor of a warrior.
Moments later, he catches up to the band and turns them from the thieving upstart stallion. Family order prevails. The defeated bachelor retreats to the waterhole to hone skills until his time comes to head a family. Some Native American folklore regards the horse only as valuable property. But most often, the Mustang is revered for its wildness. Today, that freedom is more than myth. It's a living legend. In a frozen Arctic whiteout, stories are passed down from the old to the young about Nanook, the polar bear. This awesome bear looms large in the Arctic people's mythology. The Eskimos believed if they feasted on Nanook's rich red meat, they would be infused with the bear's legendary courage. Even today, the hunter who wears polar bear pants has special status. An adult polar bear is the largest predator on Earth. A female patrols the shoreline, eyeing her favorite meal. She waits patiently for an opportunity to attack. Today, the seals and walrus have other ideas. Always on the lookout for a meal, her attention is attracted by a scent from beneath a snow mound. She knows this is a good place to find a seal lair with a pup too young to swim. This is no seal pup. The two ounce ermine shows its spunk or foolhardiness. Though it hardly seems worth the effort, polar bears will hunt small prey. mouthful of snow is no substitute for a real meal, but for now it will have to do. Once thought to be unsociable nomads, polar bears are now known to enjoy each other's company. There has even been a somewhat unwelcome socialization with another species, humans. That's a big male. Yeah. Inhabitants and researchers in polar country take unusual precautions to protect themselves from roaming bears. I got the glint in his eye. Firecrackers on trip wires scare away would-be intruders. He's moving towards the door. See it there? Yep, firecracker just went off, right firecracker. Here. 
But as contact becomes more common, it's easy to become complacent about these enormous animals. Sometimes legends are not distant. They're right in our face. The closer wild animals are to humans, the more likely a confrontation. People love to watch animals, so photographing them is just as natural. And as shooting home videos becomes more popular, we must remain vigilant about the instincts of wild animals to protect themselves. As this home video enthusiast tapes an elk herd, she is unaware that it is rutting season for these animals. This is the time when males vie for position and mating rights. Unfortunately for the videographer, the dominant bull decides to do what his instincts tell him, challenge the intruder. The wide use of camcorders creates a different bond with these mythic beasts. With that closeness, comes increased peril. And it seems everyone these days has a camera. Even being a professional filmmaker with animal experience does not guarantee safety. This dangerous white-tailed deer buck couldn't care less whether he's being taped by an amateur or filmed by a pro. His reaction is the same. Professional researchers must approach wild animals to tag them for study. This protective elk mom disagrees. Maybe we don't want to tag this one. <laughs> and we wondered why the hood had dents in it, Cleve. <laughs> Naturalists on a tagging mission to a goshawk nest are about to get more than they bargained for when the female takes issue with their handling of her chicks. Goshawks are legendary birds of prey. You can see why. The tagger is about to have a folk tale of his own to tell. First, just a friendly warning. The experienced tagger wears a helmet for a reason. He hurries to attach the last band. Tagger and baby safe. Some animals more than live up to the folklore surrounding them. The alligator has a reputation for eating almost anything when it's hungry, and that includes human flesh. Its hollow teeth, once used to measure a frontiersman's gunpowder, line a massive jaw. When it clamps down on a victim, it has the force of a vice. With 
best to stay watchful in southern swamps. No boater meal today, just another sun bath. A great many animal encounters with humans are food related. Bears seek out campsites not to harass the campers, but to secure food. With a superb nose and great intelligence, the bear quickly equates camps and meals. When the scent of food emanates from a tent at night, the experience is memorable enough for a new animal fable. darkness deepens, tall tales are conjured, based on fact and enhanced by imagination. Stories are concocted about Dracula turning into a vampire bat that feasts on human blood. Of course, there are vampire bats. They were named after the fictitious undead creatures that journey nightly in search of sustenance. The fact is, they do consume the blood of their victims. Even though vampire bats are known to pass on rabies, they do not directly kill their prey. So gentle is their sharp bite to sleeping animals, birds, and even humans, that the bat most often does not even wake them. Victims sleep through the encounter with only a telltale blood stain as evidence of the intrusion. In the glistening mirror image of Denali, North America's highest peak, Legendary animals interact in a pristine Alaskan environment. Two with mythic prowess are the wolf and the grizzly bear. The relationship between wolf and grizzly is one of mutual respect. They don't prey on one another, except for an occasional grizzly stealing an undefended wolf pup. They do compete for food. The wolf's find of a caribou carcass quickly attracts the entire bear family. Unaware of their approach, the wolf is surprised by mother bear. The result of this brief confrontation is that the bear family is now the proud possessor of a meal. The wolf, lowering his head in submission, is resigned, at least for now, to his loss. 
As the female urges her cubs to eat, the carcass has attracted more company. A male intruder is about to learn a lesson about territorial rights. As the male crosses the river toward the carcass, mother instructs the young to stay back. The babies are busy practice defending, just like mom. The original owner of this meal takes advantage of the situation. As the ruckus winds down, the wolf decides to have his food to go. Even this magnificent predator is humbled in the face of territorial war between two awesome legends. The wolf has another famous associate in the vicinity. The moose looms large in Native American folklore as a source of medicinal power. The wolf is also a mystic symbol of healing, but they are rivals. However, it is in the real encounters that they demonstrate how they become hunter and hunted. It all starts when they're young. The trio of juvenile wolves is restless, itching for a little action. Unfortunately for this naive moose calf, it's about to become the object of the trio's attention. The wolves are unlikely to actually prey on the healthy calf. But in typically juvenile fashion, the canids feel the need to see just how far they can go with the moose during their practice session. The meal is interrupted by the first youngster's approach. The second slinks close to the ground, just like mother taught them. The moose is not fond of the odds. It takes teamwork to become good hunters. The pushy pup is joined by the third sibling. The first wolf has positioned himself only a few feet from the moose. The pup makes its move. Calf has had enough. Angry moose is deadly. These two beat a hasty retreat, leaving brother a little dazed and a lot wiser. Today, the moose calf has lived up to its reputation for self-defense. Legends don't have to be large, menacing, or even mammal. Nestled low in the scrubby brush of the southwest, there lurks a bird looking for all the world like a cuckoo. It is a cuckoo bird, but it does not act like one. Meet the roadrunner. Emphasis on runner. Its legendary speed is the stuff of cartoon history.
This carnivore can fly, but prefers to run. It's more comfortable on the ground. Its keen eyes on the lookout for, what else? Food. It's not hitting the lizard to kill it. The rock is a meat tenderizer, making prey much easier to swallow. After a good reptilian meal, it spreads its feathers to let the warm sun aid digestion. Roadrunners are fond of reptiles, especially rattlesnakes. There are many tall tales about roadrunners and rattlesnakes. One story claims a roadrunner will surround a sleeping rattler with cactus, so when it wakes, the snake kills itself by thrashing around on the spines. The reality is, roadrunners do eat snakes, but they kill them in a much more traditional way. This time, the rattlesnake is the victor, but the lucky cuckoo will survive the injury. You see, roadrunners have a built-in immunity to the rattler's venom. As for the rattlesnake, the confrontation has it so jumpy, even a harmless fly makes it twitch. They will both live to meet another day. Not all reptile meetings lead to a storybook confrontation. The Gila monster seems to suffer the western diamondback rattlesnake without too much concern. The hungry rattler is on its way to a more satisfying engagement. The kangaroo rat is a feisty desert survivor. However, most of the time, it's no match for one of its mythic desert predators. The rattlesnake's tongue flicks scent the nearby meal. seems unaware of the danger.
Now the snake waits for its lethal venom to take effect. Rattlesnake has upheld its deadly reputation. Tales surrounding the reptile depict it as a villain, a tempter, an evil that forced humans from the Garden of Eden. The reality is that this scaly serpent helps keep rodent populations in check. It performs a valuable, if sometimes crude, service to us all. There is no American animal that possesses a richer heritage than the bison. Their sheer power inspired Native Americans to revere them. Numbering at one time over 60 million across the Great Plains, the bison provided the Indians rhythm of life and source of survival. Hunted for food, clothes, shelter, and weaponry, the bison was everything to some tribes. Youngsters were taught at an early age to value the great beast. For hundreds of years, they hunted bison on foot, chasing them into traps so they could be harvested. After the European settlers introduced horses to the tribes, hunting was decidedly easier. Ancient tribal legend has it that long ago, their people became complacent about the bison. Some began killing them for their own satisfaction instead of for food. In short, they had lost respect for the bison's sacred soul. The story goes that as a lesson to the people, the great spirit brought massive rain and flooding to the land. shaman, a savior, convinced the people to return to the old ways and stretched a bison hide over his people to protect them from harm. The reality is that from 1830 to 1870, Euro-Americans pushing west decimated the herds. For many of those who hunted them, it was without thought of the consequences. For others, the eradication was more calculated. A popular 19th century slogan was, every buffalo dead is an Indian gone. than 60 years, 60 million bison would become a pitiful thousand. The good news is that, by the slimmest of margins, the plains bison survived its brush with extinction. To 
today, wild herds approaching 10,000 roam free. In 1890, a Lakota Sioux man had a prophetic vision. The dark night of my people will last 100 years, but then the sacred hoop will be mended. With the return of the mythic bison, perhaps the healing begins for all the legendary creatures which share the earth. Their awesome power and majesty must continue to be experienced in real life and deep in our hearts. I'm Marty Stauffer. Until next time, enjoy our wild America.